All right, Mr. Rowan Dredge, live from Australia. Welcome, my friend, to the Monday Mindset. How are we doing? It is so good to be here. I've been looking forward to this conversation, and it, I love it even more that we can do it globally as well, Kevin. I think it's brilliant. I, I love it. You know, like I've complained uh, about Zoom for for the past year. I've been grateful for it. Right? It's like that that it allowed me to get some <laughs> get some work done and, and provide for the family. Uh, but I've certainly complained about it quite a bit as well. But one of the benefits, right? It's like one, I get friends around the globe, just thanks to our giant family, uh, the giant world that we get to be you a bet. part of. Yeah. Um, but we get to connect and have conversations with people. It's it's incredible. So I'm I'm fired up. Um, you know, as a kid playing games like global type things, you got I always had to like pick different countries. Like in Australia was always like the continent that like I wanted like that's where I that's where I want to be. Have not made it there yet. So it's on the bucket list. Uh, so someday we'll, we will record this, record this in person, but, uh, so give us, give us like who, who, who's Rowan Dredge. And, and for those listening, you know, in Australia, they say Rowan in America, they say Rohan in the South and Rohan, right? It's it depends on where you are, but we're going to call him Rowan Dredge. Uh, but, but who is Rowan Dredge? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? What's your work? What's your story? Yeah, well, we, we just on the name thing, you know, we don't mind when we arrive to North America. We just love being with our North American friends. But I become Rohan and my wife becomes Megan. And uh, um, in Australia, it's just uh, plain old Rowan and Megan or David and Shaz. You know, like it's uh, it's um, uh, you realize how much you, you love the big wide world when you begin to have conversations like the one we're having. So my story is, I think if you pulled one thread out, Kevin, it would be, I love people development. I love seeing people uh, win, develop, grow, which is why mindset is such a great conversation to have because it, it starts there in so many ways. Uh, started life as a high school teacher, spent two decades in the not-for-profit space in faith-based communities, and 16 years ago, literally started a corporate business by accident. I uh, did some extra training. I've got a, uh, a master's in educational psychology and I'm thinking, what am I going to be doing in the future? And really it was about people development. So I went and did some extra coaching and training and my first client sold me. So 16 years ago, uh, this month actually, I started with my first client and uh, four years ago, I transitioned across full time to the corporate space. And uh, really every day I get up and I'm thinking about how people's leadership development worlds can improve. And uh, I do that as part of my own practice with executive development, keynote speaking. And uh, I work with a business partner, uh, Mike Hardy, who's also in the giant ecosystem. So we, uh, we get a lot of energy from that and we get a lot of, and we give a lot of energy to it. We love it. Yeah, I love it. That's so fun. I love seeing all the updates that we get, you know, at, in, in the giant community. We have, we have Slack where we keep up with each other and see what's going on around the world, which to me is a massive enc encouragement, right? To see, see, you know, we've got people all over Europe and Asia, like around the globe, impacting leaders and growing leaders and to see the work that you guys are doing. It's just fun, right? It's like we're, we're separate, but together all after the same thing, right? Of unlocking people and developing people and, and helping people um, become become their best and, and whether that's in their work and in their families. And so it's, it's fun to see the work that you guys are doing and the impact that you are having um, and to be able to celebrate that, you know, as, as a big, a big family. So we're talking about talking about mindset uh, on Monday sure. mindset. And, and I, I always wonder these things like, is that a very American thing, right? To talk about mindsets, like do people in other, in other cultures and other countries and other continents, is that, is that a conversation that you guys have in Australia? Yeah, well, the answer, the short answer is yes. And uh, I think as uh, it's fair to say that as a country, we are heavily influenced by what's going on in other parts of the world, uh, North America being one of them. And so if there's something coming down the line, if you, you just want to use as a metaphor, the streaming, ideas. We used to uh, see something get launched in, a, in America in either in the movies or in a streaming platform. And then all of a sudden it got caught up and people realized that you only had to press one more button for it to go uh, through the uh, through the interwebs to Australia. And it wasn't as far away as it as it seemed. And so we uh, we're very much influenced, I think, by the global scale of things. And so the idea of mindset, mental health, health and well-being, psychological safety, these things are enormous conversations for uh, our country right now. 
And as you would know, there are enormous conversations for the world because we're navigating our way through a, uh, a pandemic comes up in every conversation that we haven't seen for a hundred years. And so this is becoming even more important. And so absolutely it's top of mind, keeping people safe, keeping uh, employees safe, keeping a, a check on how people are thinking, feeling, and what they're doing as a result of that is a priority for us in our leadership development experiences, but also in workplaces. Yeah, and I think you know we've had the conversation with, with quite a few people of, of how, you know, how people have dealt with the past year is a direct reflection of their mindset, right? If they had an unhealthy oh, mindset, no yeah. the, the stress of this year became overwhelming, right? It's like it was a stressful year, no matter, regardless of your mindset, but, but how, how you thought shaped how you showed up in the midst of it and whether it was, whether you got through the year and it was a good year, um, or it's just been the worst possible year of, of your life. And, and yes, outside circumstances shape that, but, but your inside circumstances do, do as well. The things that you consume, right? If you're just constantly negative and stressed out and worried and fearful and angry, like that's, that's going to impact how, how you show up. Um, so when did, when did mindset become a thing for you? Like when did it, so a lot of people, like they just go through life and they probably don't think about it. I think in our line of work, right, we're probably a little more intentional or, or aware mm -hmm. of it than most people. Um, but when did that kind of light bulb come on for you that, that mindset was a thing and something you need to pay attention to? Yeah, so I think the whole idea of mindset and particularly in the context of the the, the frame we're living in right now, it I think it's both a, a revealer and an accelerator. And so I think for me, I can go back two decades. I've just uh, I've just had a birthday of um, uh, so I've, I've I've literally just turned fifty one, which is just I just forever I've thought that's the oldest anyone could possibly be. So it's kind of <laughs> weirding me out even saying that. But I can go back two decades, Kevin, and I I was finishing off my master's degree in ed psych, and you're talking about how the brain develops, how learning develops, how thinking develops. So from a uh, from an educational point of view, I'm like, okay, that's really interesting. And I'd been in, in study world for a decade before that. So you're being exposed to different ways of understanding. But I suppose it really hit home for me when I got to 35, I'd been in a role for a decade. I was ready to make a change. So I started to think about what the next 10 years was going to be like. And that was actually the catalyst that began, if I look back over time, it was the catalyst that began the transition across to what I'm doing now. And I looked at, okay, what do I want to be doing? I want to be developing people. All right, do I have the skills for that? Yeah, probably. Are they good enough? Well, they could use some, uh, they could use some work. All right, do I have the mindset for it? And I was one of those people that put skills, skill set above mindset. Now I put mindset above skill set. And so I think probably at that career transition point, I realized that if I didn't get my thinking right, if I didn't get my uh, sense of processing right in terms of thoughts, feelings, attitudes, it all flowed onto behaviors. And they were either going to help me or they weren't. And so I probably stumbled into it at that point. But I'd say for the last 10 or 12 years, I've lent heavily into patterns of thinking, ways of understanding, uh, awareness assessment and reflection and then making the uh the necessary changes my wife calls it reflection in action so while something's happening in front of us i've got like this camera in the back going hang on a minute what are you doing what's driving you what's what what are, <laughs> are there feelings that are not not useful here right now and and that kind of goes on at the same time even right now <laughs> even in this conversation i'm going is this good? You probably need to stop now. Like, let's wind it up, row, and move on to the next thing. That's all going on, right? <laughs> no, I, I love it, and that's like that is self leadership, right? Like for those who are familiar with the giant tools and the giant system, right? The know yourself to lead yourself, like that's where leadership happens. It's in that in that rounding the corner from tendencies to actions, right? Like that's, that's what all that should be going on back there. Of like, wait a minute, I usually go this way. How does that work? Nope, nope. Need to go right this time, and and that's so hard. Um, but that's that's where that's where the magic happens. Like when you, when you can intentionally choose a better action because you're aware in the moment of like, nope, this emotion isn't right, this tendency isn't right, uh, and and it's a process, right? Like it's not a it's not an overnight thing. You don't just get there. Like it's it's years and years and years of I don't know if we ever get there um, consistently, right? But we hope we're there. We're there more often than than we're not. Um, yeah. So and, and exactly I think you know. Right. It, 
in the, in the work that you're doing, that we're doing, that anyone is doing, I, I just don't believe, um, and this goes to the skill set mindset conversation, like, I just don't think you can get to the level you want to get um, if your mind isn't right. Like, it will yeah. consistently, regardless of skill set, your mind will consistently hold you back uh, if you don't work on it. And, and that's why I think people get really frustrated because their skill set's there. Why am I not moving forward? Why am I not getting promoted? Why am I not? And it's, it's your mindset that's actually what's what's holding you back. Have you been in situations where your mindset was a liability for you, right? We've talked, we'll talk a little bit more about like when it, when it, how it's become an asset, how you cultivate that. But when has your mindset been a liability for you? Oh, there's, well, there's no doubt because I think when you lean into this kind of understanding about leadership development, about self-awareness, about your own personal growth and your contribution to team and marketplace and organizations and community and family, you always run out of runway. Right? So I'm in a way, I think what I've gotten used to, Kevin, is I've gotten used to actually running out of the capabilities quicker uh, because, uh, but that in itself is something you become a little bit, um, a little bit more aware of. And so, because typically what you do is you'd say, uh, no, I need to be safe. I'm pioneer first voice. So for, for you and I understand that, but really the key driver is around competency, but it's also around being seen to be competent. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, whenever I either felt incompetent, threatened or challenged by second voice connector, so challenged by people not buying into my amazing ideas, I found myself... <laughs> Like, and this was this is recent, right? I I imploded a career on not knowing this stuff. So this is this is how how costly it's been, and um, I just went into default mode. You know, I went into okay, I need to get people on my side. They need to do what I'm saying. Don't they understand I'm the boss? Like this, and it it was almost like a wave that kept building up momentum, and then it crashed, and I went with it. So I've paid a pretty high price for not being aware of that and not being responsible. And it's one of the reasons I'm grateful for the experience that I have with the five voices and the giant experience, because that helped me unlock that next level. Uh, so it's um, now today, I'd say five, six years later, it's probably more of a sense of keeping my hands on the wheel going, hang on, hang on, hang on, you're going off track, bring it back, bring it back go in and say sorry, Re reset that environment. It's more a case of adjusting than not being aware of what's getting in the way. Yeah, yeah. And I think so many of us, you know, probably have similar stories where we maybe we've tanked a career, maybe we've tanked a relationship, maybe we've tanked an opportunity because, because of that lack of awareness, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I love that that difference of you get to a point where it's not lack of awareness, it's just being able, being able to adjust. But we, we go over that cliff and then we get defensive. Right. Like then then we get like once people they're challenging your ideas, or they're, they're not believing in them and you just keep trying, keep trying. Well, then it must be their fault. It must be. And it can't it can't be me. It's got to be them. And you just you you sabotage everything like that. Those are the people that we we don't follow. And we know they're good. Right. To your point on competence, like we know they've got the skills, but they don't have the mindset, which 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 comes out as a lack of character oftentimes. Right. It's really just an unhealthy mindset, but it comes out. It comes across as a lack of character, a lack of ability to reflect a lack of ownership and and it can it it's that that influence piece is is so massive so what are you doing now are there practices that you that you put in place um because you know those tendencies aren't going away like we, mm. we are who we are to a degree now that doesn't mean we settle for that um but it's like those tendencies are are, are there um and a, a lot of people will just say oh that's just who i am you got to deal with it right like well yeah that, that's not self-leadership that. <laughs> right like that's 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 laziness that's hypocrisy um that's putting the burden on other people to adjust to you or to learn to work around your weaknesses mm. um, but what are the things that you do to try to to cultivate this this consistent and healthy mindset uh, it's a um it's such a useful question kevin it's um the the whole idea of of understanding firstly i'll say this my one of my highest values is personal responsibility so when when you said that's 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 who i am just deal with it you know that would great that really would great I man what would what would my north american friends say that would get in my grill right like that would uh and uh and so that i don't buy that at all you know i'm i will never ever sit in front of a group of people and say i've got it together uh, I haven't got it together. We're here to learn. We want to be students. 
this is something that we co-create. Like right from the very start, I'm going to take responsibility for me, my mindset, my attitude, my behaviors. If I get it wrong, I'll say sorry. And so right from the start, I'll, I'll say that. I learned uh, in that transition across to my corporate practice a couple of things. And I use a, a, a process that uh, has served me for a, nearly two decades now. And essentially, it's this whole idea of assigned meaning. So what just happened? What did I make it mean? And then what did that do to me in terms of the way I feel? So my physiology and then my behavior, my actions. So what happened? What did I make it mean? But then uh, my friend Matt Church talks about this idea of the third eye. I'm sure you've got it in North America in our sporting events. We've got this camera that sits up above and you get it looks down. And in fact, in some uh, some of the sporting events, it comes right down and is right over the, uh, you know, the, the batsman. That's a cricket yeah. term, that one, uh, <laughs> or, uh, or 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 the, uh, the football player. And, and yeah. so this third eye is a really great metaphor for I can look down and say, whoa, Rowan, you are very quickly going down a road that's going to go nowhere good mm -hmm. because of how you feel, because of what's going on inside you, because of what you've told yourself that person thinks and that person does. In fact, this happened to me in a meeting with uh, people that were my superior. Uh, they asked me to come to a meeting because they wanted to see how I was going. And, uh, you know, I've, I've learned to read through those code, uh, code name, you're going to get it. Uh, so I'm <laughs> sitting there and then they began to challenge me on something and they began to challenge me on my behavior towards my boss, actually. And they were fundamentally incorrect in the way that they'd seen the situation because someone had said, you know, Rowan had done this and that's what he meant. He did this. They never talked to me about it, but they still <laughs> thought they'd tell my superiors. So I'm now being held to account for something that's a story they made up. And inside me, Kevin, I distinctly remember this process. Everything slowed down and I went, what's going on right now? They think I'm being seditious. They think I'm being disloyal. They think I'm actively undermining my employer. They, that, and they're, okay, so what's really going on? They're actually really trying to find out where I'm coming from. This is all going on yeah. in, my, uh, in my mind in split seconds. This is why this stuff can be so useful, but also mm -hmm. so challenging if we don't understand it. Because I can go from zero to 100 in my, in, in, in my anger, responsive, defensive levels if I don't know this is happening. And then I thought to myself, okay, what do they really need to know? They really need to know that the way they're seeing it isn't where I was coming from and we, could, we can actually move together uh, towards a much more resourceful outcome. So I asked them, I said, do you think I behaved in a way that was disloyal and undermined my, my, my employer in public? And they said, yeah, we actually do. I said, wow, you know, I'm so grateful that I understand that's what you think because it's not like that at all. In fact, let me explain to you what was going on at that point in time. And then I said, is there anything else you wanted to know about, you know, where I was coming from? And they said, no, oh, no, that, that's like satisfied everything. And it was fascinating. Now, I've probably taken 90 seconds to tell you something that happened in about seven seconds and even faster in the way that your, 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 your thinking and your feeling happens. But I remembered that as a turning point, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how mindset works for me. Yeah. I think about it, I feel it, I work out whether it's useful or not, and then I put all my effort into adjusting it so that it becomes useful for me and for other people. It's easy for us to be able to have these kinds of conversations because the emotions aren't there. And what I love about mindset conversations is how closely related they are to feelings and behaviors. Mm -hmm. And unless we have this important conversation that you have every week with really clever people, we don't realize, I don't realize how closely my thinking, my feeling and my behaving all is. And if I don't realize that, I make it your fault. And yeah. I've made it a lifelong journey to be personally responsible for how I feel, what I say and what I do, which yeah. all has its basis in my mindset, in my thinking, in my attitudes, my values. Yeah. And it's, 
and, and yeah, to your point, it is it is easy, easy for us to talk about it in the moment. It's far more difficult, which is why for anybody listening, you got to prepare for it. Like that, that's what that's what leaders like. We this can't just be like a talked about thing. Like you have to put it into practice. Like mm -hmm. the point is like you can live these things out. You can take these these you know s situations and circumstances that have a tendency to go really negative to end very poorly and actually get better outcomes if you if you have a better mindset in the midst of it. And that and that's the point. It's like. Don't beat yourself up over over past mistakes where you've not handled it well. Learn from it. Understand why you've responded the way that you've responded, and get a vision for like how would a better version of me respond? Like the next time I'm in that situation, because it's probably going to happen. How can I? How can I be better? How can I? How can I take a breath, yeah. slow down, get perspective, and lead myself and have a better mindset in order to get better outcomes? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that idea of um, this, this one actually changed my marriage, right? Mm -hmm. I, I uh, you know, because we a lot of this we learn, I realize we learn from our family system and our upbringing and the way that mm -hmm. uh, however, whatever form of, 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 of parents we had in our home, how they related to each other or, or not. And so you know, when I got married, I, I came from a strong a family where we have strong personalities on both sides of the genders. My, my wife came from a... Uh, a personality where she was taught to be a really strong woman. And um, we have a very strong daughter and uh, I love that. Everything about it, I love. But I made the mistake, Kevin, I made the mistake of making Megan's strength wrong because of my insecurities. Mm -hmm. And I did this for a long time. Like we're talking over 10 years. So I'm just, I'm not proud of that, but I'm probably not the only guy that's <laughs> done it. Um, but here's what changed. I realized that I needed to be curious, not critical. Mm -hmm. And then it was, I won't say it was like that, because that again, I think that that cheapens the process. But I realized that every time I was reacting because of something that I thought, something that I felt, mm -hmm. I would be critical. Instead, I chose to be curious and it's yeah. changed everything because it's allowed my wife to be much more open and honest about her feelings, her fears, her concerns, her dreams, her hopes. And I think I'm just a better listener as a result. Yeah. Perhaps a little slow on the uptake, but a better, <laughs> but a better listener. Hey, be, be, better late than never. And I love to the, to the, like, the curious piece is so good. For those who haven't, uh, go watch Ted Lasso. It's one of the best shows I, I saw last year. But there's a great quote in there where he's like, they're talking about being judgmental and, and being critical of people. And he said, you know what? I've just learned to be curious, not judgmental, right? To be mm -hmm. curious, to not be, to not be critical. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's such a huge mindset shift because um, we have to own the experience that people are having on the other side of us. Like we can get, we can get critical of them. You're an idiot. You're not, you. Well, what did we, what did we do to create that situation to give them the chance to, to misunderstand us, to misinterpret us? So I, I love that. Um, all right. Before we, before we run, um, one question I love asking people, like, what are you excited about right now? Could be something you're working on, could be something just general in life. Like what, what excites you right now? Yeah, well, I appreciate being asked that. We've just sold our house and uh, nice. we've, uh, yeah. I, I, I grew up in uh, Sydney in Australia on the East Coast and uh, I was in two different parts of that, the city for uh, my, my growing up life and my early adult life and career. And 13 years ago, we moved to Melbourne uh, on the, the southern part of the east coast of Australia, a beautiful city, both beautiful cities. And uh, we've uh, now that I'm in a place where my business doesn't necessarily need me to be anywhere geographically, we've actually made the decision to move closer to the beach and uh, closer to a faith community. And uh, we've got a great school for the kids. So at the end of this year, uh, six months from now, the time that we're recording, we're going to be moving and uh, my wife uh, and my daughter are up looking for homes right now. So every day we're, uh, we're getting feedback on what the new kind of new life will be looking like. And so I'm really excited about that because I think it's a really good move for our family. Yeah. I think it's a really good move for us. And I think it reflects a bit about what's going on in the world. I can, I can run a global business from anywhere. And Amen. I love that idea. So, my friend, I want to I want to run a global business fifteen minutes from the beach, and uh, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. So that's really exciting me. And my my in work kind of area 
uh, my work with Mike Hardy, my business partner, and in, in we are just beginning to see significant amounts of traction on across large organizations. And uh, that's what we get out of bed for every day. We want to see that leadership development piece picked up and embedded because it changes so many people's lives. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, and yet the, the beauty of being able to, you know, Bronson, the CEO of Giant, he's he's got this life that he he and his wife agreed to and, and kind of set up years ago. They live in, in Florida. He hates Florida, hates the heat. Uh, and, but she's from Florida. It's like, well, we'll live there, but because we just have to be able to live, I want to live somewhere else during the summer, which is funny. Like who, who of us would complain about living in Florida in the summer, but it is crazy humid, right? He hates it. And so he goes, he goes, I will design a life where we will homeschool our kids so they can do school from anywhere and all, and I'll design a, a life where the only thing I need to work is a laptop. Uh, and so they spend their summers living somewhere else. And so last year was Denver. They're in Boston this summer. Uh, and so I've told my wife, I'm like, you know, we love Oklahoma families here and that's a huge deal for us. I'm like, Oklahoma in the summer is miserable. This is the most mild summer we've had I, that I can remember. It's right. July. As we're recording this, it's July 14th and it is 89 degrees. Average right now is probably 102. Right. Right. So it's, it's, you know, so I told my wife, like after talking about that with Bronson, I'm like, I don't want to live somewhere else, for, live somewhere else for the summer. I would like to live somewhere else in July. <laughs> and so we're trying to figure out like, how can we, how can we just get an Airbnb and, cool. and live somewhere else in, in July? So I love it. Um, where can, so for those who want to connect with you, um, you've got your giant affiliate link. Tracy will throw that up. Is that giant.tv slash FLG? Is that yeah, right? Four leaders, four leaders Global is the okay. work that uh, Mike and I do together. That's our business. And and typically that's the front door to people working with us. So fourleadersglobal.com, giant TV, okay. uh, giant.tv forward slash FLG, Four Leaders Global. I'm at rowandredge.com, rowan at rowan dredge. Uh, we, um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I run a practice. It's lean. It's mean. It's fast, and uh, you know we get back to people promptly and quickly, and and love having those kinds of conversations. That you know, and as we both know, that embed people into this way of thinking. Because you said before, tendencies and actions, tendencies and actions. We in that in that model, we typically b judge behaviors and and consequences or behaviors yeah. and outcomes but we don't spend enough time digging into tendencies and mindsets mm -hmm. and perspectives and attitudes. And that's one of the reasons why I really value the work that we do with Giant because it helps us unpack that and it helps people take responsibility for it. But I'd welcome any contact. Our business is global. We've got interests in North America, Europe, UK, growing in Africa as well. And we love Australia, New Zealand and Asia. So uh, we don't mind being global. I love it. I love it. So for those listening, reach out if you want to connect, you know, make spend some time with, with Rowan and Mike and their crew um, getting getting better. Mr. Dredge, thanks so much for hanging out on the Monday Mindset. Thank you so much for your time, Kim. Really appreciate it and love your work. It adds a lot of value. Thank you. Oh, that was a great, great. What are your thoughts, Kevin? Um, I had a lot. Can you hear me, by the way? My microphone just kind of messed up. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay. Um, I, I just love the, you know, the, the, I don't want to call it tool, the concept of, and this is for, um, you know, the, the, he talked about the, the third eye, right? So being able to like, so in American sports, right, you're watching a football game and this camera comes down and you can see right behind the quarterback, you can see the receiver, you can, you can see the play as it's happening. And that allowed to be able to do that. Right to have the skill to be able to to get out of the weeds and to back up and get real perspective on a situation is such a critical thing, right? Because we we just keep kind of grinding our gears, doing the wrong thing because we're, we get so so narrowed down, focused on what's happening. Like the weeds are surrounding us. We think we just keep going, keep going, then we'll get out of the weeds. But to be able to back up and say, wait a minute, what do I actually need to do here? There's actually a better way out. There's a better way. I need a better perspective. What are my tendencies in this situation? So to kind of have that that third eye, um, and that's just a great visual for me of like that that camera behind uh, behind the players as they can see the whole field. It's like that's such a skill um, that we need to develop. Mm, I agree. Yeah, I'll never watch a football game without thinking of this interview. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. That little camera. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, well, I just love his honesty. I love um, I love when a leader can admit the things that they've 
made mistakes in and, and show you their process of how they're changing. And I, I know I'm sure his wife loves all that he's learned and, and maybe employees or people he works with as well. So I think it's just a great reminder that we don't, as leaders, we don't have to have it all together exactly. Uh, but as we're, is a process and we're all still yeah. just creating. And, and to not be afraid of, you know, we talk about self-preservation a lot and, and we're such a, we're so afraid of losing our, our, our job, reputation, all these things. And not that you should be out trying to lose those things, um, but you're going to mess up. You're going to screw up. And, and those, if you, if you use them right, they become lessons and they become part of your story. They become credibility because it's otherwise you get, you become blind, right? The lack of self-awareness just kills leaders and takes leaders out. Um, and they, and when, when things happen, it's somebody else's fault. Well, this wouldn't have gone this direction. I'd still be in that job if so-and-so and if so-and-so it's like, no, you, you, you screwed up. Right? You didn't have self-awareness. You blew people up. Um, you were a jerk. You were whatever. And, and you don't have to say that's who you still are, right? But say, you know what? I was that person. I did, I did cost myself that career. I did cost myself that job. I did cost myself that influence. Um, those are the people that we actually want to listen to. Those are the people that have real credibility and, and authority in our lives. And so as, as you're going throughout the week, anyone listening, like you're going to screw up. Don't get defensive about it. Just apologize for it. Like, you know what? You're right. I messed that up. That, that, that's on me. I need to get better. Uh, it's, watch your influence skyrocket because nobody responds that way in those conversations. Mm -hmm. Certainly not my tendency, right? My mm -hmm. tendency is to get defensive, to blame other people. Well, yeah, remember when you did, it's like you're never going to get more influence with, with that response. Uh, and, and, and for me, by the way, like how that's one of the most helpful kind of resources or thoughts for me on that is I wouldn't allow that response from my kids. Mm -hmm. I like our kids have to, take, we tell them like, Hey, no, you just need to take ownership. When you make mm -hmm. a mistake, you have to take ownership. Well, if I expect that from them, I have to be living that, uh, with them and, and with other people. And so like own, own up your, to your mistakes, right? Like it's, and, and it, they won't be, you may lose your job. Like it happens, right? Like let's not pretend like bad things don't happen when you make mistakes or poor decisions. They do, uh, but you can always recover. Right. And if you become the person who grows from that, then you can use that lesson and that story uh, to build something special. Absolutely. Well, that was amazing. So glad we got to connect with Rowan and uh, so glad all of you have joined us again. Uh, if you're out there and you're in the giant, uh, excuse me, not the giant, if you're in the coaching space, the consulting space, business coach, leadership coach, and you want to connect uh, with a company that's really um, going to give you a lot of support and amazing community of other coaches like Rowan. I mean, we get to be friends with Rowan around the world, right? And when we have a question, when he has a question, he reaches out to us. Um, you guys collaborate and things like that. So if that's something that you long for, I know it's hard out there as a solopreneur. So if that's something you long for, go ahead to giant.tv slash overview and watch, watch kind of what our heartbeat is, see if that matches with you and, uh, and apply if that's something that you see yourself doing. Uh, thanks again, Kevin. Always appreciate it. Absolutely. See you guys next week.